in the Bible, God spends a crazy amount of time trying to prove that he's the only God. Like I, I would say fully half of the Old Testament somehow revolves around God's perpetual, ineffectual attempts to prove he's superior to things that don't exist and consistently failing. And you got to admit, that's an embarrassing problem for your omnipotent guy to have. Right? If you can't get elected when you're running unopposed, you must really suck at your job. If you guys were like, you know, Noah, we like the podcast you put on fine, but we think we're going to go with this inanimate, shiny statues podcast and said, I would take that as a cue to get into gardening or something, but not God. He just keeps plugging away at it like that guy who's sure he'll have some artistic talent if he just buys fancier pencils. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. In the past, I have presented that very same fact as proof that God either A, doesn't exist, or B, sucks ass. But the more I think about it, the less I like that argument. So at the risk of dumbing this whole thing down too much, the argument goes like this. One, if God existed and was omnipotent, he'd be obviously better at all the God type stuff than gods that didn't exist. Two, if he was clearly better, the Hebrews wouldn't be constantly turning to figments of their imagination to do God shit without noticing that they were inferior. Three, Hebrews were constantly turning to figments of their imagination to do God shit without noticing that they were inferior. Conclusion, God doesn't exist. And as logical as all those steps seem, it actually is not a sound argument. In fact, there's a glaring error in premise number two that I'm embarrassed to have missed for so long. Premise two grossly overestimates the intelligence of human beings by ascribing them the demonstrably non-existent tendency to choose that which is effective over that which is imaginary. Hell, if premise two was true, I'd never have had to articulate this argument at all. Consider it with a quick substitution. One, if science was correct, it would be clearly better at all the science type stuff than the shit that doesn't exist. Two, if science was clearly better, humans wouldn't be constantly turning to figments of their imagination to do science shit without noticing that they're inferior. Three, humans are constantly turning to figments of their imagination to do science shit without noticing they're inferior. And if that doesn't take all the wind out of it, try getting a little more specific and just plug in the word medicine for science. Right. In fact, the entire long history of science can be easily analogized to Old Testament God's doomed efforts to get his chosen people to stop making high places. When we read the Old Testament for the Holy Babel segments or for Bible Peace Theater, we made jokes about the fickle allegiance of the Hebrews throughout. God would show himself to be God. He'd conjure up some rock water, moon the congregation, part of sea. Then a couple of years later, all the very same people would be going, yeah, but maybe this baby cow, though, right? Huh? You know, but is there any better analogy for humanity's relationship with science? Science cures polio. Humans thank God. Science builds airplanes. Humans pray that they'll work. Science creates modern medicine. Humans buy a book on medicinal humming from Gwyneth Paltrow. And despite science still being the only one to actually send people to the heavens, humans still ask preachers how to get there. Of course, an analogy between God and science is bound to break down early and often, you know, where God's strategy was generally to inflict his wayward acolytes with some kind of great calamity or whatever. Science just gets better at its job. You know, science keeps coming back with ever better iterations of truth. People linger in reality a little longer and more of, more of them decide to stay there every time. Science chips away with every new discovery, every new invention, every new explanation. God started off perfect, which means, you know, he's as good as he's going to get. Science, though, can get better every fucking day, and it does. And it's important that we remember that. It's important that we remind ourselves that we're living in unprecedented times. And we have been for a long time. History is cyclical, sure, but we've never known as much as we know now, and we've never known as much as we will know tomorrow. Religion seems inevitable to us. Magical thinking seems inescapable, but our imaginations are constrained by history in a way that the future isn't. Sure, it's, it's always been there, but that doesn't mean it always will be. In fact, our ability to chip away at it all but proves it isn't invincible. With enough time, a toothbrush can saw through a boulder, and we're far enough into this process to see a pretty distinct groove. Now, it, it's a big fucking boulder, right? But we get a slightly better tool for every stroke. So even a small groove could be the sign of an imminent collapse. I know it doesn't seem that way from where we're standing right now, but we have to remind ourselves 
everything is immortal until it dies. 